Hi everyone, it's Friday evening. It's um, March the 12th, 2021. I hope everyone had a beautiful day in the Lord. I just wanted to come on here and talk to you a little bit about some of the things that I've been observing. Um, I know that as Christians and um, my brothers and sisters in Christ who are genuinely saved, uh, know the battle that's raging outside of us and inside of us. We all know this is rising. We can all feel it. And um, a couple of things that I noticed um, recently um, that emerged online. And um, I noticed that a lot of preachers, mostly... Um, converted Jews to Christianity. Um, I call these Zionist Christians because um, for some reason or another they have moved away from the cross and are totally immersed in Bible prophecy. And there is this push to support Israel like I've never ever seen before. You know, I only want to speak right now in this moment to people that have truly been converted and have been fully surrendered to Christ. Because once you fully surrender, the culture that you grew up in and the things that formed your identity start to peel away like an onion. And when you look back, you say to yourself, well, I remember when that meant a lot to me, you know. I'll tell you personally, when I was a Catholic, and I remembered them defacing uh, the, the, uh, the church or tearing down things, um, it, I sucked my breath in. But that doesn't bother me anymore. I'm not hooked to any of that stuff. Not that I ever prayed. Uh, to the saints or anything, even when I was in the church, but you, you identify with things that you were raised in, okay, they kind of cling to you, and, and uh, you, you're, you identify with them, so it's merged with your identity, but as you walk with Christ, those things start to fall away from you, and that's what it means to be separate from the world. Uh, there were other things that uh, that were into my identity as a businesswoman. I I have uh, several licenses in um, insurance and real estate and all kinds of things. And um, that was a big part of my identity, and that is gone now. I don't, you know, I don't have any uh, licenses hanging or degrees or anything like that. It just, it's not important anymore, see? My walk with Christ is more important than any uh, letters uh, or uh, licenses that I've acquired in my lifetime. But at one time, it did mean something to me. When I had my own office, they were on the wall behind my desk. And it did mean a lot to me, but it doesn't anymore. See? And even my heritage, you know, being Italian-American, second-generation Italian, um, I mean, I wore that like a, a banner across me to be an Italian woman and all the things that went with it as far as being a good cook and... Um, and having family over and, you know, making dinners for people and all of that and defending my background and my heritage and even my genealogy of the people in the family. And that doesn't mean anything anymore to me either. You can swear against an Italian or Italy. I don't care. I don't. Geography means nothing to me anymore. And even... The people in my family, when I, when I continued in my walk with Christ, I mean, they all started falling away because the love 
that was that I thought was there was conditional and I had to get over that and see as you walk with Christ you're actually walking out of the world and into the new dimension with Christ and you can't step over into that final threshold unless you've peeled that onion see so now that I know that through my own testimony and I could testify to what it means to walk with Christ and how you transform after you're converted and I see other Christians clinging to prophecy like an air hose and I see them clinging to a parcel of land that's spoken in the Bible Israel they're putting Israel before the cross they're online there is an explosion of items for sale now all over Facebook and Instagram items from Israel you never saw that before you never saw the people that were in the kibbutz finally getting on there and showing their face and selling the things that they made and now this is all over the internet another thing that I noticed was there is a rising up against women now whether you want to believe this or not the real war here the real battle is against man and woman because Satan despises the female absolutely despises the female and although you may have a good husband that treats you well just like I have a good husband that treats me well there were never there is never really um, any kind of solidarity on the earth here for women I mean women have put groups together to support each other they can only go so far okay and then they're labeled feminists see and to be a feminist and to want something that is a human right is not the same thing it's like today if you disagree with the Jews you're an anti-semite even though you have no hatred or malice in you for the Jews if you don't agree with what they say you're you're pushed into that category which is criminal actually and the same goes for women men have defined what a woman a woman's role is how she should look how she should act and as soon as she breaks free from that construct that was put in place for her there's an uprising and a hatred and a vitriol okay and I'm not talking about gay people where they broke the the, the female mold and uh, went into this cross-dressing and all of that I'm not talking about that I'm just talking about the average woman who wants to be heard her voice be heard and has something intelligent to say and being constantly being pushed down to assume the position if you know what I mean in your place where you should be like a child seen and not hurt I got into something on um, I'll be honest uh, put out a video that women are weak weaker than men weaker than men and I listened to his um, his litany and he just kept saying it like he was just trying to reinforce something listen I have experience in cult programming of the mind I know how people can control other people with brainwashing and believe me 
uh, this was an unholy sermon because it was telling woman that you are weaker than a man. No, maybe upper body strength, but not weaker. You're just different. See, men look at women as if they were um, like damaged goods, you know. Um, they're not as intelligent as men. They're not interested in thinking, most women anyway. There are a lot of very intelligent women and um, uh, uh, articulate women and in uh, high places too. And they've done some wonderful things. But the, the vast majority gets pulled into one place where they're emotional, um, you know, um, they're unpredictable, they can't maintain their stream, you know, like their flow in business, they get interrupted with their, with their emotions and they can't perform right, and um, they can't do what men do, they can't outthink a man, they can't um, out physically perform a man, and this was being, you know, uh, this was the the, uh, the silent message that was coming out of uh, this this little um, sermon, and um, I I opened my mouth and I says I says no I says well, you know what if you're married to somebody, and um, you know you're you're born again Christian and let's say you know your spouse is not or he's kind of almost there and not and um you know there's a lot of demons in there you know you've kind of walked for a while and uh the holy spirit is cleaning your act up okay and you got a head on your shoulders and you're married to somebody who's got addictions who um is bad with the finances and uh, this, that, and the other thing maybe doesn't have any interest at all in domestic duties. And uh, now you're wearing all the hats, okay? And uh, they're telling you, they're, they're constantly saying that it's a woman's fault that men have become emasculated. Well, I don't think anybody could feminize a man if he doesn't have that in him. Just like if a woman is feminine, I don't think anybody can turn her into a man or push her into that role if it's not her. And there's this push to blame women for the feminization of man. Of man. And, um, and along with that goes that you have to shut up in the house, you know, you have to let the man make the decision. It's his vision, that's what they said on that thread when I was commenting, that the woman doesn't have a vision. It's his vision that she has to, when she marries him, she has to support his vision. And I made a comment on the, I said, no, well, when I got married, I'm married, um, how many years am I married? I, don't, I just had an anniversary uh, in February. Uh, married uh, 47 years. And um, when we got married, it was our vision for our future. We fell in love and uh, we both had things in common and we set our goals and we both had the same goals and we're both reaching out for the same goals. But this is not what they were talking about here. It's almost like the man has to lead in the direction he wants to go and the woman just has to follow him. Now, this probably what breaks up a lot of marriages because when a woman gets married today, um, you know, it's kind of like you're, you, you have, uh, you help each other, you know, if I'm weak in a certain area, my husband will kick in. And if he's weak in a certain area, I kick in because the goal is for us to be a team and to be copacetic with each other and um, get along and to, you know, be fruitful in our life as a married couple. And they weren't saying this, and they just kept saying the woman was weaker and weaker. Well, I finally said, well, you know, weaker, uh, that's what you say. I said, but uh, try to pass 
um, a baby through your body, through the opening the size of your urethra, and see how strong you are. Okay? Uh, you know, it's not, you can't measure, it's apples and oranges when, you, when it comes down to the word weaker. Because strength is, has many dimensions to it. It's not just upper body strength. So you cannot, you cannot condemn a woman and uh, shrink her into submission using that platform because it's faulty. It's faulty logic. And there are women out there that are believing this stuff, that are trying to do what God wants them to do, and sitting and being ravaged in their life and, and the, the ship is sinking and going down because they feel they don't have to have a right to open their mouth to stand up against maybe somebody that married who's a, a lackey or who, who he's uh, inexperienced and he hasn't evolved yet. He's immature. Some people don't mature until they're in their 50s. So this was the this was the tone on the thread, and um, it was very interesting to um, to banter back and forth, uh, and to see that beneath this whole doctrine that's in the Bible, there's an underlying um, feeling of animosity. And um, like the Lord said, um, enmity, hatred. And I see it. You know, I see it. Uh, one thing that really has disturbed me is how these um, Christian Zionists are leading the flock astray and getting them to focus more on Israel through prophecy than they are the cross and their own personal walk with Jesus Christ see because your walk doesn't end when you go to your knees and you repent for salvation your life only begins at that point that is where you start cleaning out the attic and the basement and all the clutter that was in between Um, this Israel thing has evolved into a real romance. They're selling tours online because people can't travel, you know, because of the COVID. And, um, you know, they're, they're continuing to take you there, you know. Well, this, this, is, the, this is the holy land for me, see. This is the temple, people. This is the temple of Jesus Christ right here. And I can't get any closer to Jesus if I went to Israel. That's, that's gone. It's past. It's history. Okay? But my future, and it should be yours too, your future is in your day-to-day -day walk with the Holy Spirit. Because that Holy Spirit has a specific job for each one of us to do. And if we're romanticizing about Israel, and we're romanticizing about becoming a Jew, okay, we are putting the Jews and Israel before the cross. And this is a very, very distressing issue. This I've been in prayer a lot about this issue, and believe me, the Lord is not happy with this. Remember, we have a jealous God, and we don't want a piece of geographical land to become a point of idolatry in our war. And, you know, it's very, very seductive, especially with the Internet, because everybody has a ministry channel. You're going to watch an, uh, a video of them preaching or, 
You might even watch a Zoom, you know, where they have several people talking at once. And you find yourself so engaged. You look at their face and you make a decision, you know, you don't even realize it, that you that you either like the way they look or you like the gestures that they make, the way they turn their face, the way they raise their eyebrows. And before you know it, they've captured you. And what they're saying now is inserted into you. And now your beliefs are starting to change. You're starting to take a different road. You have to be very careful in your walk, people, because these traps are everywhere. There are shills in the Christian community all over YouTube that want to keep you focused on talking about Israel and prophecy. And um, they're everywhere. There's even this uh, app called Nextdoor. I had a big battle on that site and I got attacked so bad in that neighborhood. It's an application that you can download that keeps you connected to your neighbors. And um, I got into a big thing about the vaccine. And uh, some woman who was a nurse came on there and she started saying, well, you're nobody and, you know, I'm a nurse and throwing her letters, tossing her degrees around, you know, those letters and tossing them around like salad. And I said, well, you want some dressing on that salad? You know, because you don't know me. You don't know what how much research I've done. You don't know what I've learned in my lifetime. This woman made knew nothing about me. And all she did, she started calling me names, she started putting me down, anything to deter the seniors or the older people that were listening in in the neighborhood from what I had to say to help them, maybe to understand why they should think twice before taking the vaccine. And I got into a big hoo-ha over that. So... I just wanted to come on and uh, talk to you about some of these things that I noticed. And um, it's going to get more difficult, people. It's going to get more difficult before it gets better. And I, you know, I know that some of you that follow me on my ministry have noticed in the community that I posted a few things uh, to uplift the women because it was Women's Day. And believe me, uh, this has nothing about going against God and this has nothing against uh, feminism because I am not a feminist. I, I actually buck against misogyny. See, if you buck against somebody who is a misogynist, it doesn't make you a feminist. It just means that you're reprimanding them for something that they shouldn't be doing and it's infringing on your rights as a human being forget the gender i'm a human being first before i'm a woman so we need to treat each other with respect here a lot of men who have anger management issues and have issues with women Maybe because of the way they grew up. Maybe they just have demons. Okay? They use the scriptures to, to intimidate women into submission because it makes them feel elevated. You have to be aware of that, ladies. You have to be aware of that. And don't let that happen to you. Okay? I'm always here if you need to reach out or email me. It's going to get worse. Women are going to be uh, tormented in these last days. Men are already rising up against women. And I don't know if you've seen it, but I certainly do. I'm very astute when it comes to demonic assaults. Okay, um, I hope all of you have a blessed evening in the Lord. And uh, I will be back again very, very soon.
God bless you.